What's up, everybody? It's a Blue Drake, and now that I've had some practice, I wanted to take a little time to show you some of the advanced features and advanced functionalities that you can utilize for firearms in virtual reality. In this case, specifically with the AKM assault rifle. Now, in one of my previous videos, we actually did a full tutorial or walkthrough of all of the basic components and all of the basic operations of the AKM, but now that you hopefully understand those, I wanted to show you some things that you actually see a lot in other video games but are really hard to appreciate until you get your hands physically on one of these firearms in a realistic environment such as virtual reality um, and it really changes your perception in, in ways that I, I think are totally worth showing now before we continue I do want to make clear, um, I, I am not a military historian, I am not a firearms instructor, I am just a guy with a VR headset who participates a lot in military uh, simulation communities which ironically do have a lot of firearms instructors and military historians of which I am not one of them. So if I say anything slightly out of context or slightly wrong, please tell me politely, politely in the comments below. Um, definitely not pretending that I know everything that there is to know about this AKM. Um, but if you have something to shed light on, please let me know and then I can learn from you. So we're going to take this clip here. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Just, <laughs> all right. And we're going to load it into the Kalish native. OK, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done for real. Uh, this AK-47. All right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just that was the last one, I swear. OK, um, what I'm going to be showing you is the different ways that you can reload your weapon. And these are seen, again, all the time in normal video games. But when you only press one button to reload and automatically uh, operate your firearm, you, you don't really get to understand it. And, and even more so, it doesn't make as big of an impact on gameplay that it could if, you were, if your actual skill in reloading and operating the firearm was factored into the gameplay, which it is now, which is awesome. So we're going to talk about three major ways to reload your firearm that are seen in video games and, well, I mean, just uh, at this point in real life. Um, you can can, of course, load your gun normally, you cock it back, and you deplete the entire magazine. Once it's done, pitch the magazine. If you want to continue firing, you load it, cock it back, and continue firing. Now, this works, but it's not the most efficient way to reload your gun in both ammunition and time. There is another way that you can reload an assault rifle or really anything um, that helps you conserve time and also helps you maximize the amount of ammunition you have available to you at any given time. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but trust me, you'll understand this. So in order to use the other way, you first reload your weapon normally and you fire off some rounds, but you do not deplete the entire magazine. When you take off the magazine now, the weapon is still charged. There is a bullet in the chamber. In fact, if we look, you can still see it. There's a bullet still charged in the weapon. So if you take another magazine and load it in, you do not have to recharge the weapon. You can just instantly continue firing. Now, that is the second way that you can reload your weapon. And the third way isn't really a different way to reload or like actually operate it, but it's a way to use this to maximize your effectiveness in combat. Let's say we have two magazines. You reload the first magazine, cock it back, and you begin firing a few rounds, and you start moving or you don't have to fire anymore, you can take this magazine, put it back in your vest, take the other magazine, don't even have to recock, and now you have a full magazine uh, and you still have an extra magazine that actually still has ammunition in it. And you can cycle between these two magazines
in order to not just decrease the amount of time that it takes to reload, but also every time you do reload, you have more ammunition than if you were to just deplete the magazine, or a single magazine by itself. Now, obviously, this works best in engagements where you're not just full autoing into the enemy all the time, and you're just depleting magazines left and right. But if you're firing off a couple shots, and then there's some time where you don't need to continue firing, you can just continue reloading to your most full magazine in order to make sure that whenever you get into engagement, you have as much ammo in your magazine as you possibly can have, which is great. And of course, you can still ditch the magazine with ammo in it if you want, uh, but you're losing ammo. And this is actually, this is really cool because this factors into the way that you play. If you were reloading, I forgot my weapon was charged. <laughs> so yeah, I lost some ammunition. If you were reloading, and you need to reload again, cocking back your weapon takes a little bit of extra time. In fact, not only does that take extra time, but what takes even more time is actually putting the, de well, not necessarily depleted magazine, but your offhand magazine back into your vest. So if you're in combat, you have to decide whether you want to sacrifice losing your ammunition or if you want to sacrifice losing your time, which is putting your magazine back in your vest. And this is very cool. This this really changes the way that players interact with their firearms in gameplay. Uh, so for instance, previously, I didn't know what I was doing and I accidentally ejected a mag. Um, I, I like this because I don't know everything that there is to know about firearms. And this is actually almost becomes a gameplay mechanic at a certain point. Um, now, the fact that I am bad at firearms, if I am, say, playing as the militia in a video game, that's no longer me being bad at firearms, that's role play, as far as I'm concerned. Um, and you are actually going to have to take into consideration, like, okay, do the people on my squad actually know how to efficiently operate their gun? Because you're not just pressing the Y button anymore. You've actually got to know something. You've actually got to practice and get efficient at, at removing your mags. I can't believe I just pulled that shit off. <laughs> but that's the kind of shit that you can actually factor into gameplay now. You can actually practice and get really good at reloading your magazine. That thing I just did where I just threw that up in the air, that would normally have been a preset an animation in something like Battlefield. But now, now it's part of the game. Now you actually have to know. Um, and if you're like me and you're stupid and you don't remember that your gun is charged, you're going to lose ammunition. So that is the first cool thing that I wanted to show you. The second cool thing that I wanted to show you is actually the way optics work. And this is another thing that is actually simulated in other video games, especially insurgency. Um, but you don't really get to appreciate until you actually have these on your hands and you can move them around yourself. So this right here is a magnifier. Uh, you can actually buy this off of Amazon. It's it's very cheap. Uh, if you if you play paintball or airsoft, you might have one. I have one. I mounted it on my uh, on my um, paintball gun, and it's it's. I think it usually goes for about fifty to one hundred bucks. You can probably buy it really. But all this is is it is just a magnifier. It, it is essentially a magnifying glass mounted on a rail. So if we put this on our gun, if you look through it. Uh, it's you're not going to see any reticle. You're not going to be able to aim with this. And all this does, all this does is magnify what is in front of it. Um, and when you see this in games like Battlefield, where you put one of these scopes on the back, and if, if you remember, especially with like automatic rifles and stuff like that, you'll have a holographic sight on the front and a normal uh, a magnifier on the back, and you flip this out of the way in order to get to your holographic sight. But the way this works that maybe some of you don't don't understand or if you do it's still really cool to see in practice uh, for instance if we put this holographic sight on the front of the gun let me take this off just to showcase that this is actually what's going on you can see there's actually a, a holographic sight right there if we put this magnifier on the back it is going to magnify what is in front of it including that reticle and look at that we now have a 
three times magnification scope with a reticle. And you can combine this with anything if you want. You can combine this with things, and the cool thing about this is you can combine this with stuff that doesn't even work. Like, uh, let's see, where, where's, a, where's a good example? Where's the, there we go. Let's, uh, let's take one, let's take one of these. There we go. <laughs> Put it a little bit on the front. There we go. Let's see if I can. There. I'm now magnifying an iron sight. Obviously, that doesn't work. I mean, that's not in your best interest. But if you have, for say, different red dot scopes, like this one, for instance, this is just a different kind of red dot. And there. Now you have just a normal red dot instead of a... Uh, instead of a holographic site, or whatever the hell those are called. And you can see that that is actually a red dot. And this is, this is really interesting to see in practice. Um, I really like combining different uh, aspects of this and um, doing, doing different things because, I mean, this, this is practically simulating light at this point. Like, actual light simulation will affect your, your gameplay. Uh, and this is something that Insurgency actually does. Insurgency actually has uh, magnification. But you don't really get to see it in this context, which is, which is really, really cool. So, let's just fire off a couple of our last magazines. Oh, shit. With our reticle here. With our Kalish Nakev AK-47 with a clip. Um, and I, I can see this... I can see this really taking off. This is really going to change, in my opinion, the way games can be played. Um, here, let's, let's take this even further, because this level of detail is groundbreaking. Um, and not necessarily, there actually are other games that have this level of detail. Like, I don't know if you all have ever played Receiver. But in Receiver, you're memorizing different key presses. You don't actually get to handle the gun. And this changes everything. Um, a couple of you been, have been asking, you know, when is this actually going to be employed in a player versus player tactical multiplayer environment uh, and there's a game coming out in one month with the developer who I know uh, rather well and he has been apparently a fan of my channel for a while and he hangs out in the community sometime um, but a, a lot of these guys are very silent and then they come out of nowhere and I'm like wow you're incredibly talented but he is making a multiplayer tactical shooter called Onward and in Onward you are going to have this fidelity of firearms simulation but in a multiplayer military simulation environment so here very soon on this channel you are going to be seeing this employed in actual military simulation campaigns in virtual reality which I'm incredibly excited for and there's no limit to where you can take this people are like oh man I wish onward or something like that would have vehicles that is entirely possible in fact to make you even more excited I can easily imagine easily imagine. For instance, here is a bolt-action rifle. I could easily imagine a full fidelity World War II virtual reality military simulation campaign. Not just with all the bolt-action rifles and historic weapons that are being operated in their actual realistic fashions, but we could also have things like tanks. You could imagine Red Orchestra 2 with these systems, with the commander in the tank, you know, actually bringing up and down the hatches, or somebody actually controlling the tracks in realistic ways. It is going to get to the point where we are going to start seeing full fidelity I, I actually, this, this, you could go as far to say that these are reenactments at this point. If you've ever seen a World War II reenactment or a Civil War reenactment, that's what this is going to start becoming. It's, not, it's barely even going to be a video game anymore. You're actually going to be able to have full World War II reenactments was seen from a person's perspective in a complete multiplayer, player versus player environment, 50 versus 50 players, all using the weapons as they were used in the world. But it'll even be better than a reenactment because we're using real bullets. You're actually working to win. You're actually using strategies, aggressive strategies that were used in the war. And 
you're going to be able to see these as the audience member you're going to be able to watch this from a purse first person perspective i can imagine at some point virtual reality world war ii reenactments being broadcasted in the same way that ufc is broadcasted where you actually have a battalion of players that go to war with another battalion and they're all sitting here operating their weapons and firing as as they were fired realistically oh am i out of ammunition oh i am i am out of ammunition but this is this in my opinion this is revolutionary and i cannot wait even even if this even if virtual virtual reality doesn't become something that's incredibly widespread i could easily see this becoming a reenactment software where you have volunteers like me and my community of people who do have virtual reality organizing live broadcasted world war 2 battles uh, from first person perspectives with completely full, with complete full fidelity uh, weapons, which is incredible, and I'm really, really excited. All right, well, that is it. I hope I have made you really, really excited for the future. Um, just to actually, oh, God, I, I keep doing that thing that I always do where I grab it from the wrong thing. Um, just to get you even more excited, uh, this is actually the last day before I fly to Florida, and I am going to be meeting with Baron Von Games uh, and Diplex, who are some of my uh, best YouTube friends. And we, all the things that I just talked to you about, we are actually going to be talking about. Um, this is something that we're also really, really interested in, and we could see a lot of YouTubers getting behind a project like this and hiring de uh, hell if we have to we'll hire developers ourselves in order to create content maybe even just for youtube you know maybe not everybody even has vr and not everybody's gonna be able to play it but we'd be very happy to fund development of a civil war reenactment multiplayer game uh that we can broadcast and we can actually participate in that would be incredible we're highly motivated to make that happen because that would be wonderful video content and wonderful events for our audience to view. Uh, but yeah, that's it. All right. Uh, if you have any other questions, comments, or concerns, make sure you tell me down in the comments below. If you have anything to tell me that I said wrong or you want to correct me about, please tell me politely. I'm happy to learn. Uh, I just want to make sure I learn from people who don't want to, you know, kill me for pronouncing one syllable wrong. One syllable. It was an I and an A. It's ish and ash. Like, it's the same. I, that's practically a Boston accent. Okay, I'm done. All right, whatever. Um, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, kill yourself. Love you. Bye!